What's up, everyone? What's up? Welcome to Positive TV. I'm your host, Daniel Smiley. And today we're going to be uh, interviewing a couple talking about love, relationship, um, blending a family, all of that good stuff and how, how to uh, make those things successful. Um, Ryan and Don Russell will be on in just a moment, but I am excited to be back. I have I, t- I took a week or two off, I think, because I um, I had a little bit of an accident. I was working out and I strained my back, actually sprained a muscle in my upper glute. And it has been painful, like super, super painful. What's up, my brother? So today we're going to be interviewing Ryan and Dawn Russell. They are an awesome couple. They have taken a family and blended it together. And they're going to be, we're going to talk to them about their relationship, about the businesses that they're doing, a lot of different things that they are doing. Um, so stay tuned. Again, I do want to make a huge announcement. I am going to be hosting a speaking event on August the 8th, live here on IG uh, for free. And it is going to be some amazing speakers from around the country who are going to be pouring into your lives um, via this live stream that we're going to be doing. It's going to start around one o'clock and go to about six o'clock. We'll have a diff- different speaker every hour. I am going to be one of the speakers as well. So we're, we are we are co keynote speakers. Please join us and you'll start seeing some um, some content coming out regarding that. But I want you guys to join us on August the 8th. Positive TV. What is it all about? We want to suffocate the world with nothing but positivity and and root out any negativity that's out there. That's the whole idea of this IG Live that we do every single Sunday at 1.15 Eastern, 1.15 Central Standard Time, 2.15 Eastern. So I appreciate you guys joining. We're waiting for uh, Ryan and Dawn to join us, to request to join. And they're going to be sharing with us. So if you're in a relationship or you're thinking about being in a relationship and you're having challenges with how to blend that relationship, make things work uh, between you and your spouse and how do you bring the kids in and all of those things and make it all seamless. Uh, you're going to want to stay tuned to listen to their story and what they've done, how they have mixed their family and, uh, and now are living a, a fairly, a very, very happy life. So, and who knows, they may be, may, reveal, may reveal some things that, um, I, I don't know either, but they're definitely going to be doing that. So how are you guys doing out there? Remember, wherever you're joining from, leave it in the comments. If you if you're joining from somewhere in the U.S. or outside the U.S., if you are uh, if you have a question or a comment that you want to leave, make sure you leave that below as well, because we'll answer those questions for you as well. Um, I am also for those of you who are fans of TikTok, I'm doing a series 40 days to freedom, success and power, freedom, power and success. I'm doing a series there. It's uh, every single day I'm doing that as well. And I haven't done it for the last week again because I had a little injury to my back. But I'm going to be on IG Live today right after this. So it'll be three o'clock Central Standard Time. Not IG Live. I'm sorry. TikTok Live. Um, I'll be there sharing on live stream there. Uh, And we're going to be continuing to talk about the law of money or the law of the seed. How to get more money in your life. How to get more love into your life. How to get more of a lot of these things in your life. Richmond is joining from Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining Richmond. We appreciate that. Uh, what do you do there in Nigeria? Tell me. I want to know. And wherever you're joining from, please leave it in the comments. I would love to hear that. But while we wait for Ryan and Dawn to join us, I would love to hear more about you and what you have going on in your life. And if there are any questions that I can answer for you at this particular time, I want to be able to answer those questions for you. Okay. So again, August the 8th, you are going to want to tune in because we're going to have some amazing speakers on uh, IG Live. It's a motivational, inspirational speaking event. Couples, entrepreneurs, business owners, um, people who are making things happen. We are going to have them on uh, an amazing international women's business and lifestyle coach. Um, she's going to be on there, a uh, humongous entrepreneur uh, who uh, this couple lost it all and ha- are, are, have built their way back to success at a higher level than they have before. I'll be telling my story 
about my entrepreneurial journey. And we'll also be talking about the law of attraction uh, during that time as well, because I want everybody to really, really hear that that talk as well. If you have a question, once again, just leave it in the comments below. But I'm excited for you to join us, to listen in. And even if you're listening to, to this on the replay, I want you to uh, I want you to leave me a comment as well, because we answer whether it's on YouTube or Instagram, Facebook, um, wherever you see on TikTok, wherever you see this replay. Um, I would love to answer your question. So, Richmond, you work uh, for state health insurance and you do your data entry officer. You're looking to start a foundation to help struggling people. Very interesting. Um, now, when you say you want to help struggling people, are you want to help them financially, mentally, emotionally? What kinds of things are you are you trying to help them with with respect to your foundation? I would love to know that. <clears throat> and by the way, for those of you who are thinking about entrepreneurial endeavors, I believe now is one of the best times for anybody to start a business. In fact, during the pandemic, I started two new businesses. One is a t-shirt business, right? This is one of the t-shirts. You can go to positivities.square.site. Link is in the bio of my IG. And you can see hundreds of designs. Grab your shirt. So I, I started that. And I've started this business where I am going to be hosting speaking events um, from international speakers uh, every single, I'm, I'm going to try to do it every quarter, maybe every two months. It might end up being every month because of the demand and so many people have be, uh, have shown their interest. So, yeah, so I started two businesses along with the business that I own, obviously the staffing or employment agency as well. So this is a great time to start a business if you're interested in starting a business. So I want to know, Richmond, you know, what, what, what is your found, what, what kinds of people your foundation will be helping? That's what I would like to know. I would love to know that. Let me see if I can uh, get in contact with Don and Ryan. All right, so I'm back. I just actually had a conversation with uh, Don and Ryan. Um, they are getting in front of their um, phone and getting on IG Live here in just a second. But... A couple things again. I've been doing a series called 40 Days to Freedom, Power, and Success. 40 Days to Freedom, Power, and Success on TikTok. So if you are not connected with me on TikTok, go to TikTok and just search Daniel Smiley. And I'm doing a series, 40 Days to Freedom, Power, and Success. And we're talking about the law of increase. That's what we're talking about now over the course of the next couple of days. If you want to catch all of the other uh, lives that I did, you can go to YouTube, the full length. You can go to my podcast, The Super Recruiter Show. It's all there. But I think this is going to be a series that is changing people's lives in, in, in an amazing way. The other thing is, is I'm documenting a journey on TikTok. I'm also in other platforms. I'm documenting a journey of how to build a successful quarter million dollar business. So if you want to join that journey or check into that journey, you can definitely do that as well. So Don and Ryan will be joining us in just a moment. And again, if you have to jump off and you are you have to catch it on a replay, you'll be able to catch it on the replay on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook and here on IGTV. We'll be doing that as well. But again, August the 8th. Right. It's called Climb to the Top. It's going to be a speaking event that I am hosting live here on Instagram and it is going to be some amazing international speakers who are really going to share a lot of their experience in their life and really, really, I think, enrich and enhance and rich and enhance and help you to grow further in your life. So if you're a business owner, if you're a person who has lost it all, if you're in a relationship, if you're struggling with being single, if you're if you're a, a professional woman, and you're trying to break, break through a glass ceiling, you are going to want to be part of the August 8th event. Uh, because it is going to really, really be helpful for you. So we're bringing in a cross section of a lot of people who are going to really, really help. So Richmond, you said uh, your organization will help the poor, the hungry, and give them that push they need um, to not just stand financially and pull others up with them. All right, I like that. Give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man a fish, you feed him for life. I believe in empowerment 
education, giving people the tools they need to go to the next level in their lives, whatever that is. That's what I believe in. Empowerment. And so, Richmond, I would love to continue to hear about what you're doing and see how in some way, shape, form, or fashion we can um, we can contribute with empowerment in some way, shape, form, or fashion. So please continue to connect with me uh, in any way you can, whether it's through WhatsApp or IG or what have you, so that I can know exactly what you're doing. And if you have any questions about some things, I'll be more than happy to uh, I'll be more than happy to have that conversation with you as well. How you doing, Richard? You're welcome. Where are you? Where are you joining from? I would love to know where you are joining from. Where in the world are you joining from? That's what I would love to know. We're waiting on Don and Ryan to get connected and get on so that we can then have our conversation with them. They are a a, a couple who is who has. Uh, they, I, I can't remember exactly how long they've been together. I think it's been maybe three or four years now. And um, Woodland, California. Okay, how's the weather there in Woodland, California? I would imagine it's as nice as here or nicer than it is here in Texas. Um, but again, Ryan and Dawn, we're going to talk to them about their relationship and how they are, how they manage uh, in their relationship. They are business owners. They both have professional careers and they have, a, a, you know, kids from different uh, different people. And so how are they making all of that work? It's hot. It's hot there. It's hot there in uh, in, in Woodland, California. How you doing, Linda? Where are you joining from? We'd love to know that. Um, yeah. And I saw, Jed, I saw you on a little earlier as well. I know that you and I are going to be hooking up sometime soon also. And congratulations on everything that's going on with the soccer teams and club that you're, you know, you're, you're leading and heading and organizing and creating and all that good stuff. Congratulations to you on that. But yeah, so August 8th, once again, you're going to want to be here. It's going to be called the Rise to the Top. You get ready to go to church. Okay, very good. Linda's from Kenya. Thank you for joining from Ken Kenya, Linda. We're, I appreciate that. Ryan and Dawn will be joining us in just a second. But again, I want to continue to remind you, August 8th, we will be hosting a live five-hour speaking event. Um, for for uh, for people who um, who are interested in being empowered, if you are a business owner or uh, you're interested in owning a business, you you are passionate about success. You are a, a woman who is trying to uh, break through a, a glass ceiling in her professional career or her business. You are going to want to be there, and I am going to be talking about the law of attraction on that day. How to attract more in your life? How to get more increase in your life? In any area, more love, more money, more whatever, more more business, more whatever you decide. I'm, whatever your more is, that's what we're going to definitely be talking about that. How are you doing, the peaches? Thank you for joining, my friend. Tell everybody where you're joining from. We'd love to know that. And again, while we're waiting on Don and Ryan, if you have a question, leave it in the comments below. If you have a question, I would love to answer those questions for you. Once again, at 3 o'clock today... Uh, three o'clock Central Standard Time. We're going to be going live on TikTok, and we'll be talking about the law of increase, the law how to increase more money in your life, how to increase whatever you want, right? And we do it through talking about the law of the seed, how a seed works to to grow increase. One apple seed can grow a humongous orchard if you plant it right. You nurture it correctly. You know what you're doing with the apple seed. All apples are con contained within one apple seed. As many apples as you can enjoy for your life and for generations. I know you in Dallas, Texas. We need to connect soon, too. So. I have another guest that's coming on in just a second, but I do want to make sure that you guys that I, that I have you on in just a second. So I'm going to I am going to accept your your uh, your request to join um, in just a little bit. But I want to get Dawn and uh, and Ryan on here shortly. Yeah, Richard, if you want to join me live on TikTok, please join me live on TikTok uh, today at uh, three o'clock where I'm going to be talking about the law of the seed. 
How you doing, Rico? Where are you joining from? We'd love to know that. We'd love to know that. Let me see if I can get Ryan and Dawn on now. Yes. So sit tight. Don't go anywhere, guys. All right, I'm back. So again, if you have a question, make sure you leave it below. I would love to answer those questions for you either now or at the end of this uh, at the end of this um, this segment. So Dawn and Ryan will be joining us in just a second. Where are you joining from? K-O-M-E-S-A. Komisa, where are you joining from? Taki, where are you joining from? I would love to know. Fitting statements, where are you joining from? I would love to know that. Oh, it, it is. Okay, hold on. So there... Okay, okay. So what you guys need to do, Don, is you guys need to just click uh, request to join live and then I'll have you guys join me and then we'll go from there. Remember, if you have a question, leave it in the comment section below. We love to, I love to answer those questions for you. And the peaches, I would love to we may have to jump off this live and jump back on to another live, but I would love to have a conversation with you as well about what's going on in your life and the kinds of things you're happen having going on in your life. And I can answer some of the questions that I know that you have of me as well. So I would love to do that um, after I have a conversation with Don and Ryan. Mm-mm. Yeah. So Don and Ryan, what you want to do is you want to request to join me live. And then what I'll do is I'll see it and then um, I'll be able to to uh, add you guys live. We're going to get through this. I promise together. <laughs> I promise. So the Peach's question, do you have time at 215 for us to just jump on and do kind of a, a simple Q&A? Leave me a comment below if you have time to jump on with me at, at uh, 2.15. All right. Once again, August 8th, the Climb to the Top is an event that I'm going to be hosting. It's live Instagram, live speaking event. And we're going to have four or five amazing international speakers they're going to come and just pour into your life. It's a free event. You can jump in and jump out if you like. But I want you to hold that date, August the 8th. It's a Saturday. And it's going to go from about 1 o'clock p.m. Central to um, 1 o'clock p.m. Central to uh, about 6 o'clock uh, Central p.m. And it's going to be an amazing event. Some great people that you're going to be able to connect with. And, and again, they're, they're going to be sharing their stories about how they have climbed from the bottom and all the way to the top. Hi, Dazzle by Danny. Where are you joining from? 24RT, where are you joining from? We'd love to know that. Fitting statements. Request to join live. Request to join me live so we can get this squared away and going for the people. Where are you, where are you, where are you joining from, 254RT? Yeah, they can see the live, but then you hit request to join the live. Uh, she said it's not asking them to request. Are, are they following me? If you guys are not following me, uh, fitting statements, jump off and follow me. Uh, and if you are following me, then try to just jump off and jump back onto the live. You'll see where it says request to join. Yeah, jump off the join, and then once, as soon as you jump on, it should be like a gray little banner. That says request, request to join. 
If I can get the peaches on with me live at 2.15, I am going to have a conversation with her and answer some of her questions. So we'll do a quick Q&A after this. Um, if anybody wants to you know, jump off for a minute and jump back on, we'll do a Q&A. Any questions that you have, I want to make sure that I can answer those. And it could be questions about relationships, about business, about life in general. I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Hannibal 94, how are you doing? Where are you joining from? Hannibal 94, thank you for joining. Where are you joining from? We're waiting on Don and Ryan to join us. And then we're going to get going on this amazing interview. You're, you're, you're watching Positive TV. And I'm your host, Daniel Smiley. Uh, and just a little bit about me. I'm an entrepreneur. You can see that's what my shirt, my shirt says. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a business owner. I own three uh, different businesses and have been in business for a long time, uh, since the mid-90s. Uh, and I love business. Love it. And I love empowering people. I love uh, uh, answering people's questions. I love the whole, the whole, the whole you know, the whole gamut of business. So he can ask. Is it Hannibal? Uh-huh. So tell him he could he can request to join as well. They just did it, so I'm gonna do it right now and view it. Okay, and I tell him right now. All right. Hello? 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 What's up? How you guys doing? Hey. hey. Good. Do me a favor, get in a well lit area of your house and put something in front of you. That way, because I want you know, I want to make sure that we are we are giving them some some amazing some amazing lighting. This is Don and Ryan Russell. <laughs> I love you. Be safe, honey. She's saying hey to everybody. Hey, my amazing I beautiful think, wife. I see my, son. See my, I, my laptop is right there, but it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't say request to join live for some reason. So we got the yeah. iPad sitting on top of the laptop. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Typically, typically it works better when you do it that way. Anyway, but. I want to introduce, while you guys are getting set up, I want to introduce to everybody to you guys. This is uh, Ryan and Don Russell, and um, an amazing couple uh, who have decided, you know, to get together. And they have brought not only themselves together, but they brought their family together. So we're going to talk about, you know, how they make it work, how, how they work together in business and some of the other stuff that they're doing in their lives as well, and how you guys can connect with them wherever they are. If you have a question about... Um, how to succeed in your relationship, how to uh, bring a blended family or a mixed family together, how, how to make all of those things happen, how to work with your spouse, how to actually make that work, right? Um, you know, they are a couple that's going to be able to answer some of those questions. In fact, on my, uh, one, one of my TikTok lives, somebody asked me that question, you know, how do you make, how do you make it work working with your wife or your husband or, or a partner or whatever have you and, and sometimes that can be challenged. Somebody, somebody advised me a long time ago, if you're going to go into business and you have all of the tools in the toolbox, don't, don't get a partner. I think having a partner could be good if, for you if, if that's, how you, that's how you roll. Um, but we're going to talk about that and we're going to see um, how, how all of this works um, with them. Because I am in interested in hearing how you bring two families together to, to blend them to make one successful family. That's important. So are you all, are you all ready? Y'all close? Yes. How you doing, Dawn? I'm great, Uncle Daniel. I get to call you Uncle Daniel. <laughs> you can call me Uncle Daniel, Daniel. Yeah. We'll talk about our relationship as well. I don't um, even think you're my Uncle Daniel. But <laughs> where, where is my baby? Um, at her dad's house. On vacation. Oh, okay. Over there for driving school. Because you know, you know, I, you know, I was going to ask about my baby. So uh, let listen. We have probably about forty minutes um, because IG gives you like an hour. So we have about forty minutes. So I want to welcome everybody to Positive TV. I'm your host Daniel Smiley, and what I've decided to do, and it started in the pandemic, is just come on one time a week and interview some amazing people that I know, that I connect with, whether it's people that I know like Ryan and Dawn, um, and she calls me Uncle Daniel because um, her, uh, we're, we're, we're family from that perspective, right? Her, her daughter, her amazingly talented daughter is my niece and she's absolutely amazing. But this couple is, is amazing as well. And so I wanna I want talk to them about, 
I want to talk to you about your relationship, some of the things you're going uh, that you have going on. And this will go not on, be not just on IG Live, but it'll go on TikTok, it'll go on Facebook, it'll be on YouTube, it'll be, it'll be a lot of different places uh, on a re-air. Also, my podcast on a re-air. So we also at the end want to, want people to know how they can connect with you. So with that being said, I am going to let you two kind of join in, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you're doing, and then I'm going to ask you guys some piercing questions. <laughs> okay. So you get started. Ryan. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us about uh, you guys, what you're doing. Uh, hello, my name is Ryan Russell. Um, just turned 44 years old this year. 45. 45. He's 45. Uh, He's a young uh, man. 45. Young man. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> what, do you do for, what do you do for a living, Ryan? Uh, I work for Homeland Security. I'm a caseworker. Okay. And uh, I don't really have a interesting life because I'm more of an analyzer, case processor, kind of analyze and look at things. And once I analyze, look at things, that I kind of verbalize what I think. My wife is more of the talker. So I'll, I'll articulate things once I kind of judge and look and observe. She's the one that's like, oh, let's go, let's go, let's do it. And I'm just like, okay, wait a minute, we're going too fast. And she's like, no, let's go. And since she's my wife, I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and do it. And now, I don't know, I, I, since married life, I have been going and going and going, but I've gained 20 pounds of happy married weight since then. I'm going to ask you a question before Dawn, answer, before Dawn introduces herself that's a spinoff of what you just uh, revealed to us. Okay. So what I heard you say just now is you're the type of person you want to sit back, you want to analyze everything before you make a decision. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't, you, you're not going to have a whole lot of time to analyze this, this, this question that I'm about to ask you. Okay. I have an idea about why that is. Not that it's a good thing or a bad thing. I have an idea about why that is. But why do you think you are so much an analyzer? Why, why do you think you have to have the full picture, for the most part, if that's the case, before you start getting going and moving? Because I know you see in Dawn, oh, yeah. an, idea, an idea immediately moves to action, right? So why do you think that is you're that way? Because Ashley is like that in our lives, in my, in my family. So why do you think you're like that? I think because of the model I saw growing up in my parents' household and then just me being more laid back and nonchalant is my normal attitude. So if I had to do things and move fast, it was because I didn't really have a choice as a kid. My parents were just like, go get the job done and do it. Now I'm older, I'm like, ooh, I didn't live the city life. Now I'm in the country. Now I feel like I'm more laid back in my element. And I think I'm the one that kind of balances out to where if she does do things, I'm kind of like, okay, wait, slow down. Let's kind of take a deep breath. Because some things, I can see things differently than she can and vice versa. Okay, okay. So, Don, and I'm going to come back to you in just a second, Ryan. So, Don, tell us a little bit about yourself. And Ryan is kind of revealing the fact that you are a – a uh, hard charging go getter from uh, from idea to action kind of a person. Tell me a little bit about yourself and kind of what you bring to the table in this relationship, and you see mm -hmm. the differences between what you two guys. Yes, my name is Dawn James Russo. I am forty ish. <laughs> <laughs> I am CEO of multiple organizations. I own an online company called Fitting Statements. I own a consulting firm, Creative Consultants, where I do personal and professional development, coaching, and career critiquing. I own, I don't even remember what all do I do. Oh, I'm podcast host, hashtag Rescue Me Podcast, where we have open discussions on surviving relationship pitfalls. Um, I am a CASA advocate for children in the juvenile court system. Um, I am mother to many children, but one biological. Um, I am wife to this amazing man and keeping him together. Um, <laughs> 
I am one of my goalie squad. I have a very great group of friends. We call each other the goal squad because we hold each other accountable to our goals. Um, and so, I mean, we just, um, I just keep my life very busy. I think I have some other businesses too, but it's just so much that I have going on. But anywho, that's my life. Um, no, this, this is a this is a stark contrast to Ryan. Very, very different, oh, yeah. right? You yeah. are like you are going. If, now, if, if I could, if I could paint a picture, you're going a hundred miles an hour, right? I mean, hands on the steering wheel, foot to the to the pedal to the metal. And Ryan, you're just kind of right. You're just kind of taking your time and mm -hmm. making sure that as the pathway going that the pathway going forward is clear. How do you guys make that work? It works perfect in our life because Ryan, luckily he works from home, so he gets to cook and clean and take care of our kids and work and keeps the house sane and intact. While I am and I get to come home and there's wine and music and dinner prepared and peace and quiet and sanctity so I can wake up and do it all over again the next day. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna talk I'm I'm gonna talk to you about that as well, that energy and what fuels you. Why is it important for you to constantly be going? But Ryan, let me ask you a question. How do you deal with that? Now here you are, this laid back guy, mm -hmm. and you have this woman that I know that you heavily pursued. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know that. Right. So you have this woman in your life that is going 100 miles an hour. You may want to pull her back, but you can't pull her back, if you will. How do you deal with that? And she has this busy life. She has this 100 mile an hour life. You have this 25 mile per hour life. How do you deal with it? And don't uh, you and don't you try to influence this decision, Dawn. I'm not. I want to know how he deal with it. I don't know how he deal with it. I want to know the answer. It's real easy, and I think it was more of preparation at an early age because I'm the oldest of 30 grandkids, so I already had to deal with a lot of responsibilities more than just myself at a young age, and now I'm older. I'm always strategic, and I plan 10, 20 steps ahead, and I think she's more in the moment of, like, in the midst of the conversation. She gets excited, gets the energy flowing. She's like, ideas are coming. While she's thinking about at the moment, I'm thinking two, three months ahead, six months ahead. So if whenever she does initiate something, I would already planned out 10 different avenue options available. So nothing surprises me. I'm just more as far as like, okay, I see a direction you're going. I support you, but let's kind of elevate it. Let's kind of take a pause. So that way, instead of making mistakes, let's try to avoid mistakes and just learn from wisdom. So I'm more strategic and I analyze stuff. So nothing really surprised me that she does. I can just kind of go with the flow because I already thought about it ahead of time. So it, it didn't really surprise me because I think as of my journey with God, it was more so of this is what I prayed for. So since I got it, I was already prepared for when she came before she even came into my life. Mm -hmm. Well, I and I, you know, go ahead. Go, no. I would say if I had to compare us to a couple, I would probably compare it to a lot of couples. But the one that comes to mind at this very moment is probably like if you watch Sex in the City, probably like Miranda and I can't Steve. Honestly, we're probably like Miranda and Steve. Miranda never wanted to get married, never wanted children, saw herself being a corporate woman forever. And mm -hmm. Steve just kind of came along. <laughs> no, seriously. And Steve just fit in perfectly, you know, and because people would think, well, how do you take care of him? Right. But I get that. We get that question a lot. Like people always say, how do you deal with her? You know, all the time. And they don't know. I got to deal with him, too. <laughs> right. Right. You know, even in the midst of all that, like when I come home, he'll have like house shoes ready and. But I take care of my husband, too. In the midst of all that, I still take care of his family. I still take care of him. It just works. It just it, it just works. We take care of each other. 
he he does the small things and I do the big things and it just works. It, so it so I, I wanna I wanna ask this question for the benefit of couples who are watching. Mm -hmm. uh, they may be married. They may be thinking about getting married. Um, they may even be single and thinking about, you know, attracting someone into their lives. Usually in a relationship like yours, where one person is going 100 miles an hour, in my relationship, that's me. Another mm -hmm. person is moving a little slower, but a, a, a more, uh, the better way to explain it is more calculated. Mm -hmm. um, usually when you have that, there is a rub and it can cause problems in a relationship where you, Don, may say, hurry up, you're moving too damn slow. And Ryan, you might say, well, slow down. You, we don't have the full picture, so I don't want us to make mistakes or lose money or whatever, what have you, mm -hmm. right? How do you guys avoid that being so much of a friction mm -hmm. that it causes a fire for many relationships and causes them to potentially break down? How do you guys avoid that? Go ahead. Let me answer that. We don't. You got to stay in each other's stay in your lane. I've been in relationships where you try to bring that person into your lane. Like I've been in relationships where if you're the corporate person, you think, let me make her more corporate. Like let, I want to bring her into my world. I want us to have a family business. You know, that don't work. If she's not that business person, you can't make her that business person. Don't bring home into work. I just don't think, and she may think, well, I want to be part of the business. Maybe you bring her into the business from home. Like, let her do the business part in her comfort lane, right? Um, I'll tell you, I've tried it. It didn't work, and, and it ruined the relationship because trying to bring business into, bring her into, off, into the office, it didn't work for me. It didn't work. So in this relationship, I told him coming in, I don't want to. I don't want to bring mixed business with pleasure. So we don't do it. Um, Brian works from home right now. I'm working from home. I work from home in the bedroom. I work from home in the coffee shop that's attached to where we where we live. I literally will go downstairs for ten hours a day, or we do it in two separate rooms. Um, I I let him do him, and I do me here. Um, I have even started him his own business. Well, let me put it this way. It's in his name. But I yeah. want it. Like, seriously. It's, I got my husband a business. Like, it's his business, but I run it. Right? So, at least he has a business. Right. But still, I still run it. Yeah. Um, I just don't. I don't, I don't recommend it. He's not a business-minded person. And so, I want him to have a business, but I just run it. I just think that you have to accept that person for who they are. My husband loved to cook. I let him cook, right? <laughs> You're like, I'm good with that. Too. <laughs> right. So most men are like, man, somebody asked his uncle asked the other day, what's your what's the fate, what's the best meal darn make for you? Like she started thinking like, uh I don't. <laughs> like, you know, that's don't get into those gender roles. Don't let gender roles define your relationship. When we went to premarital counseling, mm -hmm. what the best thing we got out of it is creating new traditions. Yeah, and they told us that create new traditions and do not basically, whenever you do have a disagreement or whatever, she agrees on something, I come agree on something. You have to both come into an agreement and not let that issue be ongoing because it can be something minute that spirals out of control and six months later, in her mind, she's still feeling some type of way. And in my mind, I didn't move past. I'm not thinking about it. And I forget to bring home some tissue. And she's like, yeah, you forgot the tissue. And I remember six months ago, you forgot my birthday. And you didn't do this and that, whatever. And I'm just sitting there like, where is this coming from? Because it festers and it builds up. And I think the line of communication is good to where if I'm transparent with her about how I feel about something, I shouldn't have to hold back. Because first of all, I'm a grown man so at my age I shouldn't be afraid of anybody I should be able to be transparent with my best half if I love her so much I do anything for her there's no reason for me to hold something back because I feel like if I'm holding something back either I'm feel for her reaction or I'm not man enough to deal with the response with response that come along with it and I think more so I was like more so like her when I was younger 
Like, I would just be out in the streets, ripping and running, do whatever. But I, in my mind, I put off that man, and now I'm different. So a lot of my friends and everybody says, back in the day, I mean, I was, I was an asshole back in the day. I would just be out there hustling, making money, do whatever it took. And I'm still the hustler type. Like, I don't care how many hours it takes. As long as I need to take care of my family, I'll do it. But now I'm more reserved to where I don't ever just think about myself. I think about her, my kids, my parents, my family. So I have to strategize everything across the board because I feel like I have to kind of balance out everything to where she can have as much energy as she wants. I can match the energy. It's just that sometimes she needs me to be there to listen to her even when she feels up, even when she feels down. And I'm just consistent. Like, I don't care if it's a car accident, if it's a death in the family, if it's good times or bad times, my temperament never changes Mm -hmm. because it takes a lot for me to just blow up. Never. So I think what you're saying is as a man, he's always stable. Always. Okay, so I want to, there's a couple of things, Ryan, that you spoke about, and I want both of you guys to speak to it. So you talk about having, uh, not being fearful of having open communication, speaking your mind with the other person. Um, talk to me about, and both of you guys can respond to this. Talk to me about how, why that is important uh, in your relationship, why it, why it is important in your relationship for Ryan to say what's on his mind, on his heart. And then you, uh, Dawn, as a catcher, how you receive that, regurgitate it and, and respond to it. And Ryan, the same thing, right? If, she is going to come to you with some stuff or you're going to go to go to her with some stuff. How do you guys manage communication in your relationship? I think I had to learn her style of communication as far as getting to know not just who she is emotionally, but just getting to know her as a person. So it's almost as if I know if I yell or if I'm too blunt and forward saying something, she'll shut down. So I have to be conscious of, even though I'm feeling this type of way, I can't, honestly, I can't talk to her just like a man. I have to kind of be like, set the tone so she's more receptive to what I'm saying. So when I do have that delivery, I'm coming from a standpoint of, hey, let me prepare you for if this might be a uncomfortable conversation or if this might be a conversation that I'm serious about, but I don't want you to take it the wrong way and it's almost like that trust level if we've already built that trust up and i'm constantly pouring into her when there is possibly a time of miscommunication misunderstanding Mm -hmm. she'll know that it may be something more behind what i'm saying than me Mm -hmm. being frustrated and she won't take that initial ah like i'm just yelling or if i'm just coming off the wrong way Mm -hmm. she'll be just my wife to understand like babe look this must be something else going on because this ain't normally how you react to situations. So I think it's important. Once again, we went to premarital counseling Mm -hmm. and I need, it's important for people to know that we literally went on our first date, July the 4th and we got married January the 1st. So we only dated like five and a half months, right? Mm -hmm. We've known each other for 20 plus years. We met in college 20 years ago, waited 20 years. He he jumped in my DM. (laughs) 20 years later, first day, July 4th, got engaged, Uncle De- Daniel, November the 30th, you yep. say, mm-hmm. got married six weeks later, okay? I say that because July the 4th, first day, we went to premarital counseling like September 1st. Like six weeks later, we were like, look, we 40 up in here. We ain't, look, either we gonna do this or we ain't, right? Right. We, we, we grown up in here. He's been married, I've been married. Either we're going to see if it's going to work or not. Best way to see if it's going to work, premarital counseling, right? Whose suggestion was that? Whose suggestion was it? Okay. Fine. We went to Covenant Carrollton. Covenant Carrollton does premarital counseling twice a year, Mm -hmm. $40. That's all it was. Hey. That was a good investment. $40. Best investment we ever had, right? So two things. We went out of the country. If you can travel together out of the country. And premarital counseling, because I'm either going to leave you on the other <laughs> side of this water, <laughs> or we ain't going to make it to this premarital counseling class, right? That's, that's, that was our test, okay? When premarital counseling, passing with flying colors, man, 
and 96 on it. In premarital counseling, my husband did that. He checked. We also did personality assessments. You got to find out who this person is. He is an IR. INTG. INTG. I'm an ENRJ. Yeah. Completely opposite personalities. Yeah. But we know that about each other. So when you talk about communication style, he know when I come at her, I got to know when to come at her. When you talked about that, how do you know when to come at her? He know because he did his personality assessment. He know who he is and he know who I am. So you need to know your, your mate's temperament before you come at her because we know that. Love languages. You need to know your partner's love languages. Five love languages by Gary Chapman. Pick the book up. That's another way that we know how to respond to each other. Yeah. And the last thing is you need to know, um, oh, God, what was the other one? I have one more. Oh, transparency? No, not transparency. There's one more I was going to say. Love? No, not, not love. love. Not love. <laughs> There's one more that'll come to me. I was gonna say there's one more. Love languages, we did the personality assessment. Um, Temperament, trust. No, I can't think. It's I mean, one more I was gonna say. Okay, are, okay. Why, why you got? Why you guys are? Why you guys are thinking through that? I do want to ask you another question that I believe will be helpful yes. to people. Okay, so so Don, you mentioned that you were married before, and Ryan, you were married before as well. And when people come from different relationships, obviously marriage is you know you. It's a it's a serious relationship and it, it didn't work in either your case. I don't know if that's a, a right word to use, but it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And how do you avoid bringing bad baggage from an old relationship or marriage into this relationship and potentially ruining what could be this good? You first, Don. Okay, that was the fourth one, new traditions. You gotta be willing to, to, to create new traditions. We learned that in premarital counseling. You have to be willing to let go of not only what you've done in the past, but what you grew up with. Too many times, especially in African American culture, we do what we saw growing up, right? When, mm -hmm. Well, in Thanksgiving, we eat turkey. We don't eat goat, mm -hmm. right? If your husband eat goat, be willing to eat goat. <laughs> Right, you know what I'm saying? So that was the one thing. Oh, giblet, Greg. Giblet. He said giblet. It's giblet, right? So that was the one thing that we got into it about in our premarital council. Ryan wants to have big family. Ryan comes from a big family. He wants to at at, at holiday. He wants to have 92 grandchildren running around. Okay, can I curse on your yes, show? yes. Okay. He want to have grandchildren coming over tearing shit up. Okay, he want them spilling great Kool-Aid all over the furniture. He want them jumping all over shit. I don't think pop, that's, pop, 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 pop. I don't think that's... Hell no. That's what he want. I don't want that. I don't want that ever. I want to go to today to, to they house, take Tupperware bowls, pat kids on the head, take my to go. By 2 o'clock, we out. I want to go to my clean house, go to sleep on my sofa, watch Cowboys game, and we done. Right? I don't want nobody cleaning my house, tearing shit up, and now we got to clean up, and they gone, and now we, we left with the residual. We, we disagreed on that, right? And so that was the one thing. No. So I was like, how about we do this? How about you have the kids over? I'm going on a cruise with Ashley and Anna Pat, because I know they like to cruise. Like, that's where we go. <laughs> and so we had to give in on that. So new tradition. So to answer your question, you have to be willing to let go of your past, and come up with new traditions to walk into your new relationship. And that's all the baggage. That's all of it. And if you guys are not willing to let go of all of the old baggage, y'all need to work this out before you say I do. You have to be willing to talk about it all. The exes, raising children, religion, sex, money, debt, right? Discipline, IRS bills, credit, y'all need to put credit score, take an HIV test, looking at, you know, all that stuff. If you're not willing to expose all of it, you're not ready to get married again. If there's anything that's off limits that you don't want to talk about, you're not ready to get married again. Yeah, and I think wow. it's more so all of those things and also whatever issues you saw previously in the prior marriage, don't 
blame the other person as a reason why it fell apart. You would blame yourself and hold yourself accountable for what you did for yourself. And once you hold yourself accountable for those things and issues that you saw within yourself, you have more of a sense of accountability of let me work on myself. Let me build myself up. Let me see what I can do to make myself a better person. Whatever that person did or whatever, however they are, pray for them, if anything, just like you're supposed to pray for your enemy and work on yourself. So that way, when you go into a new relationship, you don't constantly have that deflection of, well, the reason why I don't have this car, the reason why I don't have this was because of her. Right. And if I, if they didn't do this, now, find yourself, and I've seen people do it where they're constantly in a new relationship. Same they way. haven't changed mm -hmm. and still blaming the other person, but not really understanding the common denominator in both relationships were mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And the thing was, is that if you didn't grow from the prior relationship and you still the same person in the previous or the new relationship, like someone told me, it's like pouring old, it's like pouring new wine into old wine skin. And you're supposed to pour new wine into new wine skin. So it's like you pour it in old wine skin, it's going to burst eventually. So something that's so precious and valuable, you're supposed to put it into something new. You're supposed to bring life and new changes, just like Joe's better days was in his latter days and his former days. So it's almost as if once I held myself accountable for what issues or whatever, transgressions, wherever the case may be, I held myself accountable for it. So when I came into the new relationship, I had no problem talking about, okay, I did this, I messed up, I made mistakes. And when I came into the new relationship, God is my witness, when my beautiful new wife mm -hmm. met my ex-wife, the first thing she tried to do was point out stuff that either I did or things that she wanted to, basically, if I hadn't told her everything about me and the ex-wife told her about those things, she would have looked at me like, well, why did I have to find out from her? Why don't you tell me? And I'm married to you. And the thing was, I wasn't even worried about it. I was just saying, you know, new wife, new relationship, let's start off fresh, new chapter. And it, it, it became so fulfilling when she came back to me, was like, well, she told me, she was like, did he tell you about this? Yeah, he already told me. And my ex was just kind of like, and I'm like, why wouldn't I tell? This, this is my wife. Like, am I not supposed to be transparent with the love of my life? It's like, it's ridiculous to where the simplest things that you do can make a difference in a new relationship and just make you grow and trustworthy in their eyes, especially with women. It's almost like if you're the head of the household and you're the man, if you want to be that leader, you have to not talk to talk. You have to walk to walk. I just wow. do it more in silence. And like she said, what you say is like six in the city is where mm -hmm. the couple. Miranda City. Miranda City. I think I'm more like the black Marty Bird from the Ozark <laughs> with Jason Bateman. And then she she's like the politician wife on the show. Because Marty Bird was just so consistent, so mellow, so calm, but he got stuff done. He's like, no, we don't need to do this. Okay, she's jumping this way. Okay, let me go ahead and figure this out. So I can keep on pace strategically in my mind. She's just more physically more just everywhere, but not to the point of it's like erratic. It's almost like I know this is my wife. I love her. I accept her for who she is, and I wouldn't ask for nothing else different in this world because she uh, she definitely keeps me on my toes to say the least. Well, I I I do know that you you love her. You can see it, and I know she loves you as well. I want to ask you guys one final question, and then I have to have you back on for a continuation of this conversation uh, at a later date. But um, let's talk about parenting, co-parenting, parenting, right? So, Dawn, you have a child. Now, Ryan, do you have children? Yes, I have three kids. Oh, you have three kids. Okay. So, now, my valley <laughs> <laughs> has a new dad in her life. And for the audience, valley is uh, Dawn's, Dawn and Ryan's daughter, but Dawn's biological daughter. And she's like, I would... I would throw down for Valley. Period. She is. I, anyway, okay. So um, you 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 have you have these. You have Don. You have a daughter. Ryan. You have three kids. And now you're introducing a new adult. In your case, Don, a new man, right? To be kind of a father figure to her. 
And Ryan, you're introducing this woman who is going to be a mother figure to the, how do you guys make that work, blend it and balance it uh, and it work out so well so that doesn't, that doesn't destroy a relationship? Mm -hmm. Destroy our relationship? Yeah, because some, some people, you know, they'll say, well, I, they were my child before I married you. So they'll take their kids' side before they take their spouse's side. And sometimes the kids can be drawing a wedge for whatever reason between the relationship. Yeah. So the, 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 two, the couple has to manage that. How do you guys do that? So I can speak for myself. Um, I was single for 10 years. Um, but Valley has always understood order, right? So I've always raised my daughter to understand order. She understands that it's God, man, her, you know, and everybody else. Well, it was her for so many years because there wasn't a man. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, it's raising your children to just know that that's the order so that when that man comes, she understands where he's supposed to go. But it's also making that man understand that although your place is here, technically, if he's the right man, he's not going to make your child feel inferior at all. Right. And so I've been so blessed that my husband has came in and made my child feel like she's the priority from day one. She she calls Ryan Diddy, yeah. right? That's his name is Diddy, right? So my child is 15. Most children don't call that man a name of endearment yeah. at that age, right? They right. call him by their well, you can't call a grown person by their name in my house. Like, it's just not happening, right? So she, it was never an option for her to call him Ryan. She knew probably within 90 days she had to call him something. You were going to either call him Paul Paul, Ryan, uh, Daddy Ryan or something. You're just not, you're not going to even call him Mr. Ryan. That's so informal. He is a father figure in your life. You're going to figure something out. Yeah. I am so blessed. That my ex-husband and I have such a great relationship. I mean, you might as well call us brothers and sisters. Like, we just have a great relationship that my ex-husband respects Ryan's role. So it was never that competition of, well, I'm afraid that that's not my daddy. Ryan and, and Troy have such a great relationship that Ryan, Troy respects Ryan's role that he didn't have a problem with her calling him Diddy. So she has a daddy and she has a Diddy. And that's okay. what she calls him as Diddy. So no, Ryan, Ryan, I need Ryan. You answer. You got one minute, and then I need to I need you guys to prepare to tell everybody where they can, you know, find you guys. That so go, yeah. Ryan. What we, with your kids and well, co-parenting? I think it was more of a blessing, prayer, and preparation to where we met and dated so fast and got married so fast that we had to just keep on pace on what we believed in and mm -hmm. saw the vision for our family. And I think more so it was easier with Valley because I'm with her on a day-to-day basis mm -hmm. and I already had three kids of my own, so it was no problem. It was just letting her do it within her time and not pressure her to feel like you have to respect me or you have to do this. I just gradually, if she wouldn't really come towards me initially, it just happened over time and just talking to other couples. Mm -hmm. And with my kids, it's a gradual process because they stay with their mother and most of the time they're receptive, but you just go through that process where it's a little defensiveness initially, then over time it's gradually gone down. But we have to show that we're here for them and support, not